simulation sessions are held in room 314A. There is an enclosed patient room with a high fidelity patient simulator, an area with pediatric and neonatal um, child and baby simulators, and a critical care bay with a high fidelity patient simulator. There are designated areas for a nursing station, supply cart, and a crash cart. Let's get acquainted with the simulation area in the Health Sciences Skills Lab. This tour will focus on the enclosed patient room with the Lairdal SimMan 3G simulator. We operate the simulator using software loaded on a portable computer system that is operated by the clinical simulation coordinator. The room contains a camera and a microphone that records digital video of the session. There is a patient monitor that displays vital signs, oximetry readings, and other hemodynamic readings. Eventually, lab results and other diagnostic findings will be viewable on this monitor, but more about that later. Outside the patient room is an area that will serve as a nursing station. There is a desk with a telephone to call the physician, pharmacist, or other ancillary departments. There are reference manuals, such as a drug guide, a laboratory manual, and an IV manual that you can use for reference. You'll find pencils, clipboard, calculator for drug and IV calculations, a computer to look up laboratory findings, radiology reports, and so forth. Above the nursing station is a clock. You will also find a trash can. Outside the room is a, an emergency crash cart. On the top of the cart, you'll find a defibrillating unit, an Ambu bag with tubing, pads for defibrillation, and a code blue recording form. In the first drawer of the crash cart, you have emergency medications. second drawer of the crash cart is airway supplies including ET tubes and a laryngoscope. In the third drawer you have IV start supplies and sterile dressing materials. The fourth drawer has procedure kits such as a kit for inserting central line catheters as well as chest tube insertion supplies. Outside the patient room on the left is the central supply cart on the second shelf, you'll find an area that's reserved for medications. The next shelf down has IV tubing, an IV bag, and supplies. The third shelf includes airway devices, including nasal cannulas, masks, a mask with a rebreather bag, incentive spirometers, suction tubing, and suction catheters, a tracheostomy care set, and pediatric respiratory supplies. The fourth shelf down on the left hand side has gastrointestinal supplies including a saline sump tubing for insertion, 
and an irrigation tray. On the right hand side of the same shelf is a urinal, straight cath, and Foley catheter kits. The last shelf is for supplies used by the clinical simulation coordinator. As you enter the patient room, notice a hand sanitizer which serves as a hand hygiene alternative to a sink. On the countertop is a cell phone that you can use to call the physician, pharmacist, or any ancillary departments. On the same sink surface, you'll notice that there are gloves that are non-sterile in small, medium, and large sizes, as well as a sharps container. At the head of the patient's bed on the left, there is a suction unit. The suction regulator can be adjusted. Standard tubing and canister are attached. There is a flow meter with an adapter to attach airway delivery tubing and masks to simulate oxygen delivery. To the right of the head wall unit is a portable IV pump. The patient bed is a standard electronic bed. There is a foot brake, upper and lower side rails that are operated by a push lever, and bed controls on the outside of the upper rails to raise the entire bed up and down. The inside of the upper rail has controls that raise either the foot of bed or the head of bed. Now let's take a look at the patient simulator itself. The head of the mannequin contains a speaker that the coordinator will use to communicate as the voice of the patient to you and your team members. The mannequin has many high-tech capabilities but cannot demonstrate everything that an actual patient can. Some scenarios require the coordinator to serve in the patient role so that the student can assess reflexes or strength of movement for upper and lower extremities. The mannequin movement is extremely limited. The mannequin can demonstrate normal and abnormal findings, such as for neurological and ears, eyes, nose, and throat, the mannequin is actually able to blink their eyes as well as have their pupils react to light. There are capabilities for eye tearing, ear drainage, nasal drainage, and mouth drainage. In addition, the mannequin has the ability to, to facilitate and demonstrate seizure activity. Cardiovascularly, the patient has a heartbeat with heart sounds both normal and abnormal. There are pulses, carotid pulses, femoral pulses, popliteal, apical pulses, pedal, and posterior tibialis. The blood pressure cuff is on the left arm. Hemodynamic monitoring can be demonstrated as well as the ability to perform CPR on the mannequin. Pulmonary, the mannequin is able to demonstrate respirations with inspiration and expiration, showing the rise and fall of the chest. Lung sounds can be changed from normal to abnormal. If the patient's O2 saturation is below a certain percentage, circle molar cyanoses will appear around the lips. There's the capability for attaching pulse oximetry monitoring and being able to record 
oxygen saturation. For the gastrointestinal system, the mannequin can demonstrate normal and abnormal bowel sounds. The mannequin cannot accept any sort of oral fluids by mouth. Genital urinary capabilities include being able to insert a Foley catheter and having urinary drainage. The right arm has IV access. The mannequin is currently not set up for infusion of IV fluids. IV fluid infusion is simulated. The left arm is for blood pressure only and for pulse oximetry readings. Procedures, even though certain procedures can be performed on the mannequin, skill training is not its primary use. Students should state verbally what procedure needs to be done. Follow-up results from the procedure can then be given to the students. Additional data, findings, and results will be given to you based on your assessments, interventions, and procedures performed. You may receive results on the computer or find a sticky note placed on the mannequin or have to use the telephone to call the diagnostic department for results. On the top of the bedside table is the patient monitor. This monitor displays vital signs, pulse oximetry, and other hemodynamic readings, both numerically and in waveform. The monitor uses a touchscreen technology, or you can use the mouse located next to the monitor. In order to demonstrate the patient's temperature, you touch on T-Perry and turn on the T-Perry capability and you'll find the temperature for the mannequin. In order to demonstrate on the monitor the heart rate, touch the word touch when leads are applied and as soon as the EKG waveform crosses the screen you'll have the display for the heart rate. The pulse oximetry percent saturation is given in waveform and a digital number display. Further down on the monitor the respiratory rate is off to the right hand side. For a blood pressure reading, touch when the cuff is attached, touch the word touch, and then make sure that you press the start button. It takes a few seconds between 10 and 20 seconds for the system to display a reading during a simulation, the parameters change in real time except for the blood pressure reading. In order to take a blood pressure, you must then again hit the start button. This will refresh and give you a current blood pressure reading. The bedside table is the same as with any patient bedside table. It includes patient supplies as well as a bath basin and a bedpan. We hope that this brief video has helped you see what you may experience in the clinical simulation lab. Please do not hesitate to ask questions anytime you are unsure. 
the clinical simulation coordinator, and nursing faculty are here to enhance your learning and to promote your success.